Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, SD. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. As usual, go ahead and hit that like button before we get started. Hit the like button, toasters. It is free. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Also, hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Toasters, I've been checking out this interview with Billy Garland. Billy Garland, he's uh, he's done an interview on Art of Dialogue channel on YouTube. And it's been interesting. Now, for you, those who don't know, Billy Garland is Tupac Shakur's biological father. Yes, Tupac Shakur's biological father. And he's telling his story. He's telling his story in relation to uh, his history and in relation to uh, his connection to Tupac, his son's life, uh, his son's childhood, uh, what happened in childhood, what happened with the disconnect from his son, and when they reestablished the relationship, how that went down. You know, I found this interview quite interesting. It was very good, man. It's very good. Great job. And um, I don't believe I've ever heard Billy Garland, uh, Mr. Billy Garland, ever speak or conduct an interview. But very articulate man. Uh, seems like he's a, a sober thinker, uh, objective, fair. And uh, that's just the way he came across to me. But this is interesting because if you know anything about Tupac's uh, music, if you're a fan or a supporter, you know Tupac often would speak about or rap about the absence of his father, and how his father wasn't there, and how when his father died, he couldn't cry because his father was never there. Um, so Tupac was under the impression or was told, was fed a lie uh, by Afini Shakur, his mother, that his father had died. And at one point, Tupac didn't even know who his father was. But I guess eventually his mom told him his father was dead, but his father was quite alive. Um, and I believe living in Jersey. That's what he said, he was living in Jersey. So this was interesting. It was interesting. And, um, you know, according to Mr. Billy Garland, he would have visits with Tupac when Tupac was a child up until about four years old, I think. And then there was a disconnect. There was a break in communication. And he no longer will see Tupac, no longer knew how to get in contact with him or his mother. And um, he didn't see him again until Tupac got shot in that studio in New York. And um, Mr. Billy Garden had heard about it and he went to the hospital. And Tupac reveals this account from his perspective, he, he even said he woke up and he looked at somebody that looked like he was looking at himself. And that was his father. And you know, if you ever see Mr. Billy Gardner, you could de definitely see the resemblance. Definitely. Um, but this has layers to it. You know, this has many layers to it because I see people in the comments saying what took so long uh, for him to get back into Tupac's life. Well, there's a lot to that. You gotta understand, this is the 70s. You know, um, early 70s, mid 70s, there was no internet. You know, it was difficult to track down someone. It's even more difficult to track down someone who does not want to be found. And as we know, Mrs. Ms. Uh, Afina Shakur was followed by the FBI, probably her uh, entire uh, adulthood life, uh, ever since she was connected to the Black Panther Party. Um, so she was always on the run, always moving. And this is according to Tupac's account also. They were always moving, always on the run. And then also Afini, you know, got uh, got addicted 
to drugs, to crack cocaine. And so um, dealing with someone who doesn't want to be found, right? Probably dealing with someone that's very paranoid. And then you're dealing with someone who's addicted to drugs. And then you're dealing with the 1970s, no internet. So there's a lot of you know, roadblocks there, a lot of hurdles. So it's not as easy as you would think it is today to find someone. But someone can go underground even today if they wanted to. Um, yeah, just, just stay off of social media and, and do a few other things. You can go underground even today. So just imagine back in the 70s and, and, and um, doing well with all those other things that came into play with Miss Afini Shakur. But Mr. Billy Garland also said he was dealing with his own problems also. You know, I think he had a, a drug addiction also. Um, and he owned up to that. Like he said he wasn't very responsible back then as well. I mean, he probably could have done more. And so uh, he stood up on that. But once he arrived at that hospital when Tupac got shot in, in New York, The lie had been busted, and Afini had to fess up. She had to come clean. She was forced to come clean. And they said Tupac and her would really get into it, really get into it about that, about this long-lasting lie uh, that she fed them for years. They would get into it after the truth came out. But it seems like they moved past it. And he and his father started building while Tupac uh, went to the penitentiary soon after he got the shot. He went to the penitentiary, they were building while he was in the penitentiary, and they started building once he got released uh, from the penitentiary. But, you know, we could just blame here and there. We could do it with our own situations in our life. But what I want to say is, this isn't altogether a unique issue. Now, the part about him being dead, I think that's rare for somebody to tell that lie, but there are other lies told uh, within that dynamic. Uh, and usually what happens, not all the time, but usually what happens is a person, a child, will create a narrative that they formulated on their own, by what they think they know, see and hear, or they'll form that narrative on a lie told to them. Um, and that looks like what, that, 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 that's what Tupac did, and that's what many of us do. We'll create a narrative that's not the complete truth or not the truth at all. It's one-sided. And I would encourage anybody that's dealing with a fractured relationship or severed relationship where you're getting one-side information or where you really don't know all the facts or the full story and you've created a narrative in your head on your own, I would encourage anybody to seek out the truth, to be objective, to listen and search out the truth without judgment or expectation if you really want the truth, if you really want closure. If that person means that much to you, or if your own peace of mind means that much to you, seek for the truth. Be objective, be open-minded. And many times, not only pay attention to what you're being told, but also take notice of what's not being said. Because sometimes that's where the truth lies and what is not being said. People will leave out things. They may not feed you certain things directly, but they are misleading you in a way, in a subtle way by leaving out information. And then they'll leave it to you to create a narrative they want you to create. They know what path they're leading you down. So yeah, man, this comes with wisdom. It comes with wisdom. And this is a thing 
uh, that happens often in families and relationships and life, friendships. Uh, yeah, man, I've known people that hadn't spoken in decades over a one-sided narrative, over something they were fed, and they never sought out the other side. They never sought out to get information from the other side. And so, you know, this, this calls for a level, this demands a level of emotional intelligence, a level of wisdom to be able to pull your emotions back, have no expectation of the outcome, and just seek out the truth. Just seek out the truth. The truth will set you free. You know, I can't imagine how freer Tupac must have felt when the truth came out, you know, and maybe even Afeni felt some freedom because this is a lie that she had to hold on to. You know, that, that's, that's pretty wild to say the father's dead. You know, um, she didn't say he didn't want to be a part of his life. He just said he's dead. Yeah, that's on a whole different level. So, you know, that lie can bound you, can shock you. So I'm sure she felt some level of freedom and peace of mind in that. And maybe that strengthened the relationship also between uh, she and Tupac. But um, yeah, Toasters, I just want to encourage you, man, always seek out the truth. Always, man. No matter how tough, how uncomfortable it may be, listen to everything. And then you decide through wisdom and discernment what's real and what's not real. Um, and then move forward accordingly. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all toasters. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love, peace.